Hi guys, so welcome to our general uh, live Q&A session with our careers team. What a team I have for you to introduce today. So what I want to do is I'm just going to bring the team in and they're going to introduce themselves and then we'll follow it up with any questions. So please start submitting them now to get your answers. Okay, so I'll bring in Sonia. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Victoria. You're okay. I'm good, thank you. So good evening, everyone. Well, my name's Sonia. I'm one of the careers advisors who works at Leicester College. Um, ordinarily, I split my time between Abbey Park campus and St Margaret's campus, but um, currently we're all working from home. So we're offering a remote service to students, which is going spectacularly well. Um, I So I, I um, speak to students, and provide uh, advice and guidance about courses, and uh, I also says Katie, who isn't here today, unfortunately, with the UCAS higher education applications, which is in full swing right now. But absolutely, if you do have questions, please do submit them. We're more than happy to answer them. And hello, Sarfraz. Do you want to Hi, yourself? Victoria. You're all right. Hi. Hi, Victoria. Uh, as Sonia said, um, uh, obviously, you know, I'm college careers advisor. I've been in the college a long, long time. Um, and it's interesting how we've evolved. So we were a remote service, but we're more accessible. We'll talk about that in the live stream, how you can access us. But normally I work at Freeman's Park campus and I also work at Abbey Park campus as well. And I lead on employability and resources. And uh, we're doing, we've got some exciting projects that we're doing over lockdown. So thank you. And, and the last piece of our dream team today <laughs> is... Oh, thank you, Victoria. Yeah, so I'm Lisa, one yeah. of the... One of the four careers advisors that really supports students 16 to 18, but also pre-16 as well. I'm school link coordinator, so uh, provide a lot of support to schools in the city and county. Um, one of my specialist areas is LMI, labour market information. I really love that. Um, and I work predominantly with SAFRAS ordinarily uh, between, some, um, between Abbey Park campus and Freeman. But at the moment, as you can see, I'm working remotely from home. Yes, and you know that these guys have been busy than ever. It doesn't matter if we're on campus or mm. not. Yeah. They, they have been working super nailed to get your, all your career questions and inquiries answered. So shall we jump straight into the questions, guys? Yeah. yeah, yeah, no problem. So, first of all, I'm going to start off with how do I apply for a course at Leicester College? Okay, I am, I can take that question. So, um, it's really, really easy if you're currently at school and you're going to be sitting your GCSEs next year. Um, your school might be signed up for an application system called PS16. Now, if they are, you need to make an application for a college course through PS16. Um, your teacher will be able to upload a reference for you and also enter the predicted grades for your GCSEs as well. You will also get the opportunity to write a personal statement to explain why you've chosen the courses that, that you have done. So if your school is signed up for PS16, please do use that application system. Um, your school will give you a login and they'll, they will usually um, give you a deadline as well by which to get your application completed and submitted. And that will then come to Leicester College if you've applied to Leicester College. If you're not at school, though, um, and you are perhaps, say, a mature student or you're at another training provider, perhaps doing another qualification, then you can actually just apply directly for a course via the Leicester College website. So the easiest thing to do is to identify the course that you want to apply for via the website, check the entry requirements as well. They're really, really important to so make sure that you're, you're on track to try and get the GCSE grades needed. And then just click into apply now, then complete the online application form and complete it as fully as possible. Um, so enter all of your qualifications as well as the qualifications that you're studying right now as well, and all of your previous qualifications enter all of them, whatever the grade is as well. And then just write a short personal statement as to, again, why you want to study the course that, that, that you want to study. Um, then submit your application. It will come to Leicester College and it will be processed for you. So it's a really simple application system. If you've got any queries, though, please do get in touch with the careers team. We're more than happy to assist you. 
You've just answered my follow-up question completely. Uh, <laughs> so <nice>. <laughs> <laughs> I could. Okay, no worries, guys. So just following up from that, you've mentioned deadlines. Obviously, schools do have their own internal deadlines, but what about ours? Um, is there a deadline for making an application for a course? Okay, I can take that one, Victoria. Okay, so there's no actual uh, deadline however um, it, I would say it's really important to apply um, as soon as possible so for 2021 for 21 for next year um, you know it's likely that end of November December that will be open for applications um, to start to start the following year so you know if you know what you want to apply for you know do as Sonia said, you know, apply. Um, it'll either be through PS16 or it'll be a direct application to the college. And once we've received your application, then obviously we can get the ball rolling in terms of the next part of the, the process for you. Um, so, yeah, advice is don't leave it too late. We had, you know, some young people that did leave it, unfortunately, too late this year. Um, and obviously want to make sure that you're on the right course, um, you're happy um, and you're, you're progressing with your education. So if you're unsure, you know, do speak to us, speak to the careers advisor. You know, we're more than happy to, to help and support you. OK. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. And obviously, we're going to move on to the following question, which you were just speaking about, Lisa, is making the right choices as well. We understand mm -hmm. the process. Um, I didn't struggle with picking my level three options, but when I got to level four, that's I literally made a decision two weeks before the UCAS deadline. So it's very important. You speak to mm -hmm. So if you are unsure of which course to choose, do you have any advice? Uh, yeah, Victoria, I'll. Uh... I'll answer this one. Um, okay, so um, obviously you've got the careers team in front of you. Uh, we're Leicester College and we're careers advisors. So, of course, you can um, come and see us in terms of virtually, and I'll explain how that works. So if you're not unsure of what you can do or how to choose um, your courses, there are lots, lots of people that can help you, including people at school including advisors at school, there might be personal advisors, there might be support people, tutors, you can ask them for advice as well. Uh, however, obviously Leicester College has got a careers team, uh, we're, in, we're obviously on this live stream today by Katie. To, get, to actually make a sort of inquiry and to submit an inquiry, it's so easy now. You go onto the Leicester College website, uh, you can actually put in Leicester College Career Service, that's what I do on the search engine, and it comes up. And then when it comes to it comes to that page, you'll see the whole of our team, you'll see all our pictures, and from underneath that, there's a form, a short form, and you write down, obviously, what your inquiry is. Now, obviously, we want to uh, respond quickly and appropriately to you as well. So, for example, if you just want a quick telephone call you, you put down that you want us to contact you by telephone if for example you want us to email you a lot of people are doing that now just put your email down there and specify email and we're using microsoft teams as well we're doing one-to-one -one appointments which is working really really effectively so that means that we can access uh, obviously advice and you guys can access us kind of virtually anywhere and that's really really useful I think the other thing to mention when you're choosing a course, don't just choose it for the wrong reason. Choose it because, A, that you enjoy what you do, that you like what you do, um, and also that you can see yourself working in that area as well. And it's important to do some form of research. So research into that career. There's lots of great websites out there. For example, the National Career Service. They've got lovely uh, access to job profiles as well. Uh, there's I Could Careers, and I could go on and on and on. But there's a lot of information out there that you can access and do your research. And don't pick the course um, because your friend's doing it just purely on the basis of your friends doing it. Because when you finally do start working, your chances are your friend won't be doing the same job as you. You can always meet your friends socially and, you know, you can still maintain, you know, kind of friendships with them. But the best thing to do, I would say, if you're not sure what you want to do, get some advice, talk to people that are around you as well. Um, if you look at our website, um, on the same section, the career service section, 
section, we've got uh, a list of resources that you can use and uh, they're called career resources. Go on there and there's a whole range of career resources that we've put together that are absolutely fantastic and then you can access and start looking into what you want to do and how you want to sort of start your career. Okay, so please try and get in touch with us if you need to. Thanks, Arthur. That was really helpful. I think a lot of youngsters do struggle with making the right decisions, yeah. the right courses. So definitely what we will do is we'll put the um, link to the career service in the comment section below. So you can access that at a later time if you wish to follow up and make an inquiry with our course team or find out more about our resources. Brilliant. So moving on to my next question, this is a difficult one. We get it very regularly at school events and it is what are the entry requirements for your courses? So whoever's got to answer this one is a tough cookie. <laughs> well, thanks, Victoria. I'll take that one. <laughs> um, so, well, one of the entry requirements for our courses are on the Leicester College website. They're really clear and really transparent. Obviously, for the different levels of courses, we're going to ask for different GCSE requirements. So for you know level one courses, it's we, we will require a lower grade for your GCSE in English and Maths. For the level three courses, we normally ask for GCSEs minimum of GCSE grades four um, or above in English and Mathematics. The two most important subjects that you will take are English and Mathematics. Um, and because you're studying at level three, you know, they're, they're A-level standard qualifications. So they're going to be reflected in the grades that we need. Sometimes there is an opportunity to retake a GCSE um, alongside a level three course. But, you know, we do ask that however possible, whenever possible, that you do try and get the grade four and above or whatever grade is specified on the Leicester College website. And don't forget as well, you know, if you apply for a course and for some reason you might be unsuccessful because of your existing GCSE grade, there's always another option. We could look at a, lo a lower level course for you. So, you know, there are realistic alternatives that you can consider. But yeah, generally for entry requirements, please do uh, look at the Leicester College website. If you're still not unsure or you're confused about the information that appears on there, uh, please get in touch with the careers team and we can explain it to you. Thank you. Hope that helps. Yes. Everything's very different depending on what course. What you the clients are for aerospace engineering is not going to be the same as um, a theatre course, unfortunately. I can't see a dance going on to a, um aerospace engineering course, so please do visit the website for more information on that. And Sonia, you really no, okay. already picked up on my next question already. <laughs> oh no, I'm going to get on a that one on a course so okay i can take it <laughs> yeah, but Sonia partly answered that <laughs> okay so well first of all obviously on the uh, Leicester college application form you'll see that you can enter up to three choices okay but your first choice will be the one that obviously the college go with okay so um you'll be notified as to the decision okay so with the next stage of the application or if you were unsuccessful unsuccessful unfortunately then it might be when you do get your GCSE grades, you do get your exam results, then um, you don't push, you get those grades. You might be offered a lower level, OK, which in the in the same subject area. But if you're not offered a place for whatever reason, it's really important to have a plan B. And this is all about research. It's so key. Um, so, you know, you might want to... Um, look at you know applying uh, elsewhere so under the sixth form fe college friendship might be something that you're possibly considering i think we're going to talk about that a little bit later um but it's really important to have an, a backup plan just in case um if you do go on to a slightly lower level course and like as sonia mentioned if you don't get your grade four um, in, in your English and maths, you will study that. So 16 to 18 year olds will study English and maths alongside a full time course. OK, so whether that be GCSE, if you get a grade three or functional skills, if you get below that. So don't worry, you'll still be able to carry on with your English and maths if you don't get it. Um, but for many people, there's a wide range of options in terms of different levels of vocational courses. So I hope that helps a little bit. Thanks, Lisa. Yes, that does help a lot. I think there are a few people confused where if they don't do well in the GCSEs, they think that is a dead end. It's certainly not. 
with at Leicester College, we start from entry level all the way up to degree level courses. So there is a pathway for you. It just means you might have to take a longer way around, but that doesn't make uh, you unable to continue education. It's just a different process. Absolutely, yeah. So um, next one will be uh, what happened? Oh, uh, did you do that one? I'm just yeah. done that. Don't worry. Give that. My apologies, everyone. <laughs> On the first night of your open evening. Okay, so what information should I include in the personal statement? So, do you guys have any top tips? Yeah, um, I can. I mean, I can start. I can start because I think yeah. um, the other advisors may want to sort of uh, add things onto it. So the personal statement, um, what is that? Well, basically, it's the it's the piece on the application form. It's that that, that kind of blank kind of um, uh, a kind of canvas that you can actually write on. So um, the personal statement is a it's a bit on the form that allows you to kind of tell us more about yourself. So you've got to be enthusiastic about the course. You can't leave it blank. That's the first thing I will say. Please do not leave it blank. It's your chance to sell yourself. So be enthusiastic about the course. Tell us where your ideas came from. Have you always kind of been interested in that subject area? What's influenced you? And what would you like to do with it? Is it kind of the career that you want to do as well? Talk about also things that you've done that have made you quite... Um, kind of uh, kind of related to that area so for example work experience if you've done that or maybe hobbies or interests that you've got in that area there might be subjects at school that you've really been keen on I'll give you an example if you want to go into like journalism uh, but you're really good at English and you write short stories don't leave that bit out please write about that also write a little bit about your personality, the kind of person that you are, your attributes. So if you're friendly, you're outgoing and um, and also the hobbies that you've got, for example, say, uh, I don't know if you do um, army cadets and things like that, uh, put that in there. So the person statement is a piece of writing. Um, on our application form, it's not a huge piece of writing, actually. I think it's just about... Oh, about 12 lines maybe so it's not a huge piece of writing so you've got to condense it on the ps16 it's actually a lot longer it's actually i think almost one side of a4 you will have people at school to help you with that and there'll be some guidance on the personal statement uh from school or there should be and on the website for positive step 16 there's a lot of information on that and the same goes if you're applying for university because when you do apply for university, you've got to put together a personal statement. So you've got to really kind of sell yourself. Um, a lot of information is available on the UCAS website, UCAS.com, and for personal statements. And I'm going to even going to say YouTube because there's lots of great videos that actually start the process of you getting into a personal statement and writing down what, you, what you're really interested in. But I will say, please be enthusiastic. Write about your subject with such passion um, and talk about things that people don't know about, like your hobbies, your interests, your work experience, and, you know, what you like to do in the future. And I think that's what I will, you know, I think that's what you need to come across. Many people leave out the personal statement and tutors do read it because at the end of the day, they might be limited places on a, on a course. So the personal statement kind of may give you that little bit of an edge um and also tells you tells the tutor a lot about yourself so uh, definitely try and well definitely put something on there uh that's interesting thank you so far lisa sonia do you have anything to add to that or you might like there, there we go. So obviously, as well as you know, Safra says about the content that's so important. But do do the essentials as well. Spell check, you know. So do get somebody else to read it over. Make sure that your sentences flow, that they're well structured, because tutors do take that into into consideration as well. You know, attention to detail is everything. Okay. And if you're, you know, if you're, if you're not confident about your writing and you're not confident about things like spelling and grammar, mm. there's nothing wrong with asking someone to check it over for you as well, getting a second opinion. You know, very often it's, it's possible to be too close to a piece of work. And so asking, you know, for somebody else's opinion can actually be really helpful. So don't be afraid to, to ask other people's um, advice and opinions. That's great. Too. So what I'll also do is I'll share the UCAS.com link below in the comments so you can have a look at some example personal statements. They may be more tailored to universities, but it does give you a head start even if you're looking for a level three or two. So Absolutely. you can check that out. 
Okay, so one question we do get, yeah, obviously I've already mentioned that we start from um, entry level all the way up to um, degree level, but the question we get is, can I study at Leicester College um, with these methods? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is really one of the most common questions I think that careers advisors get asked collectively. So if you're 16 to 18 and you get a grade three in your GCSE, which is like the old D grade, um, when you're on a full time course, you can retake that GCSE alongside the full time course but as long as you've got a grade three. If it's a little bit lower than that, then you will study for functional skills, English and maths qualifications. And then when you do finally pass your functional skills level two in English or maths, then you can do a GCSE retake. If you're over 19, um, you have the option of doing a full-time GCSE pathway at Leicester College. Again, you do need your level two functional skills in English and mathematics to do that, but it's a package of GCSEs. It's a very intensive course, it's only for one year, um, but it's, it's great for if you want to then progress on to, for example, an access course, uh, which will then eventually lead you to university. If you're over 19 as well, you remember that you can study for part-time functional skills, English and maths qualifications, and you can also study for part-time GCSEs as well. We do offer those at Leicester College. So I, I, I think there's something for everybody, um, regardless of what, what stage you're at, regardless of what, what grade you're at. There is, there is something that we can do to help. Thanks, Sonia. Just so you know, we're in the last 10 minutes of the live stream, so if you do have any questions, please submit them in the comment below. I know with our full team, they do answer questions very really well. So if you're still watching, please continue. I'm sure they'll answer your question at some point. So, um, and we were just talking about before the live stream about apprenticeships. And um, one of the mm. questions is like more than one course option. Can you explain about college course and apprenticeships and what you should do? Okay, yeah. So um, you can, you, first of all, you can apply for more than one course. Like I said earlier, you can apply, there's three course choices basically you can put in that application form but the first one is the first one you know that obviously the college will um, look at and consider you for um, I think if your choices are very different and sometimes we see that a student might apply for engineering and musical theatre to completely different you know subject areas then it I think it would be very hard to write a personal statement around that so it might be a case of going back and rethinking your sort of career ideas and so forth and choices and just make sure that the choice that you make is the one that you really you know the, the one that really does interest you and if you're not feeling sure about it then obviously you know do speak to somebody for some advice um, but in terms of applying for a course and apprenticeship um, again you can apply for both but I do think it's really important to think about apprenticeships in a slightly different way. Um, essentially, an apprenticeship is like applying for a job. OK, there's a selection process with an apprenticeship. Um, you see a vacancy, you apply for it. Um, there might only be one position. OK, so your application form needs to be really strong. Your personal statements needs to be really strong. And then hopefully after that, um, it will be a process of you know, in into certainly a call, an interview, and the employer selecting who they want. Okay, so if you do apply for apprenticeship, we always say have a plan B, have a backup plan just in case you don't get that apprenticeship by the start of you know the academic year, and you've got a course to fall back on. So essentially, you can apply for both, but just think of them slightly different, differently. Thank you, Lisa. I hope that clears things up for everyone. I'm not, I'm pretty much sure when we go out to college, but that's something we do have to talk about and clear up with students who are interested in apprenticeships to make sure that they have still got a place to college in case that doesn't fall out. Okay, so we've talked about applying for it and we've talked about personal statements, everything through the application process. Can we just talk a bit more about being a student with us and applying for the financial help while studying. Yeah, I can I can do that one or you can do it. Do you want to do it, Seth? Yeah, I'll go for it. Um uh, you can definitely get financial help while studying. It's really, really important because some of the courses are quite expensive, to be honest. Um, you know, things like uh, photography, construction, you know, you've got to buy the equipment, uh, including uniform. 
but there's also financial aspect of getting to college as well. Like, for example, like, you know, like in the bus there, you might live a little bit further away. How are you going to get there every every day and things like that? So the financial help uh, is available uh, through Leicester College and primarily is called the Learner Support Fund. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's actually, it's actually a, an application form that you can get online. I know, Victoria, if you could put the link um from our website which says i think it says financial support um to this live stream that'd be great so people can apply for financial help through the learner support fund so it's one form that kind of covers everything so it covers kit materials books travel uh and, and it also covers if there's any bursaries available it will cover that as well um if for those students that haven't actually applied and you're listening you think oh my god why have i not applied for that and you're in college simply go to student services on your campus and, and just ask for the learner support fund um if you go on our website you, you can actually uh put that in there financial help uh, for students and there's a lot of information as well now the college also has we're a careers team we've also got a welfare team which are actually very very uh experienced and they've got lots of um information and advice and support for anyone wanting to come to college so if you need to and your situation is a little bit more i don't know um you need a little bit more help or a little bit of advice you can book in to see a welfare advisor as well or simply um email i mean their email is welfare at leicestercollege.ac.uk so if you've got any financial queries or anything to do with like finance it's welfare at leicestercollege.ac.uk i hope that helps anyway thanks so far yeah we'll include it in the comment section below i have just flashed up the link to the financial support page so whether you're an adult learner or 16 to 18 there are all different options on here that you and get more information on. Um, so aside from the financial help while studying, um, some people would like to know if there is extra support available during their studies and what that is. Does anyone want to say I can I, I, I can say Yeah, I can do it, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> we'll pass it over it now. Okay, yeah, so there's a wide range of support um, at Leicester College. I think we really, you know, pride ourselves in the fact that um, there's lots of um, areas. So within curriculum, um, you've got um, you've got your fantastic learning mentors, you know, uh, dedicated to each curriculum area. So they're the sort of um, the person in between the teacher and um, the support services so it's really to there you know if you're you know feeling a bit unsure about something maybe not having such a great day something's happened um, in your personal you know and you, you just you need to speak to that uh, mentor they are so helpful they really are um, and they they will really sort of put your mind at rest and really and, and help you um, you've got learning coaches as well assigned to curriculum areas so they're fantastic too and they're able to help um, um, with um, really sort of um, lots of uh, thinking about the next steps, what you're going to do next. Um, there's lots of activities that will have you involved in, preparing you for the world of work. Um, there are placement coordinators as well that are very much attached to um, preparing you for work. And then within student services, you've got a fantastic counselling team. Um, you've got um, additional support as well. Um, and, and you've got us and welfare. So across the college, um, there is so much support available and it's just about asking, you know, we're always, always there to help. So yeah, just please ask and yeah, we'll help you. Thank you guys. We are drawing near to the end now, but I have just had a late question coming from Daisy and Daisy would like to know, do we have to what courses we want to take in our personal statement? Um, yeah. Go on, Sonia. I'll take that one. I'm finding it a bit of a Yeah. 
no, 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 Daisy, thank you for putting in obviously that question as well. When you write a personal statement, you don't always have to put in the course that you're studying because you're writing that separately. So you have your courses in the course section, but you've got to write about it. So you've got to talk about, say, for example, if it's health and social care, you've got to talk about why you're interested in working with people, why do you like the aspect of caring, why do you like about, like, like about health. So you can't talk about I don't know, engineering or something a bit different. It has to make sense. And like uh, everyone says, you know, you've got to be enthusiastic but it has to be appropriate and it has to kind of flow as well. Um, because you do have a course section where you put your courses in, but you don't have to put the courses, you don't name them in the personal statement as such. You don't have to list if you put three in there, just say I'm interested in health and social care and that would just cover it. And I think Daisy as well, if I can just add, I think it's probably more important to write about why, why you want to do the course and set out the as well and if you are interested in a particular career path in the future maybe mention it as well a particular job role you know yes of course the subject is, is important um, but do ex explain your reasons why you want to you know uh, study a certain pathway I think that's also uh, really important to hope that helps yeah yeah the teachers were really interested to know why you want to study that subject so that really gives them like an introduction to you <clears throat> and then they can take it from there you know so it's something then to talk about build on maybe yeah. Yeah. okay i hope that helped lazy we are at bang one six o'clock so i just want to thank our creative team for going live with us today i hope all your questions have been answered <clears throat> if you haven't and you're looking back at all um what, tomorrow or in the next few weeks, please do comment and we can get those answers for you. But in the meantime, if you would like to take advantage of our incoming careers team, there'll be a link to the link below and you can submit uh, the form and they'll get back to you as soon as possible. So I do want to thank you guys for joining us this evening um, and thank you and good night. Thank you, Victoria. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.